Hello and welcome to MicroCap Tutorials. We're going to be looking at a MOSFET low side load switching situation here with our circuit. Now, we're going to start out pretty basic. 12 volts is going to be our battery. This is very common in the automotive world, or at least the automotive world as it is known. Uh, as more electric vehicles start to come onto the market, especially Tesla and, and other products like that, uh, this will not be as relevant anymore because most of the vehicle is high voltage. Uh, but for the vehicles that we have now, almost every car has a 12 volt battery, and then you have some type of load. In this case, it's going to be a 100 ohm resistor. So we, we would expect that the current that is passing through this resistor in a clockwise fashion is going to be 12 volts divided by 100. So that we should get 120 milliamps of current. Let's do a quick transient analysis to verify that. Here's my source at 12 volts, and here is my current at 120 milliamps. So exactly what we would expect uh, for such a basic circuit as this. Now, let's say we don't want this load to be actuated all the time. We would we want it to do it based on some kind of logic, maybe an event, or maybe some kind of um, uh, maybe this is a heating element of some kind. So once it starts to get cold, well, maybe we want to heat something up, or maybe we want to cool something down. All sorts of reasons to to perform actuation on a load. But uh, we're gonna show what what that would look like in the low side. And we're going to add this. So now we have a switch relay, essentially a relay, uh, into the system that's going to turn this, uh, turn the pathway of the charge on and off. And so oftentimes this device, however it manifests, is going to be called a voltage controlled current source because of that nature. It is actually changing the current um, on this side uh, rather than the actuation side or the, the solenoid side. So uh, we're going to add a ground here and the only thing left to do is to modulate the positive input on this end of it, on the control end of it. So we're going to call this gate uh, or control, we could call it both, but we're going to say gate because uh, that's going to be more relevant when we start talking about MOSFETs in, in low side configuration. So if we run the simulation we should expect no current because there is no gate signal associated with it, right, right here. Anytime you see the scale in microamps of current, unless you're studying microamp effects, you can read it or you can interpret it as zero. In a real circuit, if you left the opportunity, if you left this trace un, um, uh, how would I say, saturated to one input or there wasn't a pull-up resistor or there wasn't some sort of explicit default condition, it's possible that some type of radio wave, electromagnetic uh, spectrum may in infiltrate your circuit and may cause this to turn on uh, without you knowing, or maybe there's a, a trace that got shunted somehow, um, and this looked like a desirable place to go, so now the current flows through here, and this turned on. So if this were a safety application, you would never do this. You would never have a floating input. You always put things to explicit states. Uh, but since this is an idealistic representation, we can do that without any harm. Now, if I want to turn this on, I'm going to uh, I'm going to set at least, it has to be at least one volt as far as the setting as the switch is concerned. If I go into the switch's parameters, uh, V on, oh geez, it's almost very, very sensitive. So we're going to set this to one. I did not realize that point. That would, yeah, pretty much that any, any sort of radio wave w would potentially um, turn this relay on in a real situation. But we're going to set it to one volt. Okay, still not very realistic, but whatever. Okay, here we go. All right, so our control signal to this, this gate in, in quotation air quotes is five volts. So we should expect that this solenoid is going to be energized and then this is going to change the contact positions of the switch at N1 and N2. And N1 and N2 aren't shown, but that's typically how you would index the pins. And we would expect that now the current should be back up to 120 milliamps. There we go. Great. Okay, cool. Everything is following our expectations. It's often useful sometimes to jump into simulations uh, back and forth just as a sanity check because so many things can be changing and one little mistake that you make could make the whole thing break and now you have to diagnose your circuit. So keeping, uh, keeping these sanity checks going on as you're building new simulations is always desirable. And the more references, the more checks you have, the better it helps you have confidence that you actually built a simulation uh, that's going to give you desirable results that you can make reliable conclusions from. Okay, so there's that. Now this is ideal, right? This is what's called the low side switch, or low side load switching for this 100 ohm um, resistor. And the logic here could be anything that I want to. We, we already talked about that. Uh, but how would we do this in, in using real components or, or common components? Well, 
Okay, we're going to start to use MOSFETs for that. And MOSFETs are good because their, uh, their off state is very high resistance or very high impedance, and then their on state is very low impedance. And this makes it so that there's very low leakage current that can pass through. If you were to use a bipolar junction transistor, you may have some leakage, and then you also have to handle the bias that needs to be associated with that uh, BJT. Now, here we go. We have the MOSFET, all right? And then now, here's the gate. I like everything in caps. Sometimes works better. And I like everything with the anchors in a way that makes sense. Right there. Okay. All right, so what do we want to do here? Do we want to turn this on just to make sure that everything's working? Let's try that. Five volts. Each MOSFET that you'll interact with has different thresholds uh, with respect to if this MOSFET is going to turn on. And the end channels are easy to understand because you need a positive difference between the gate and the source of the MOSFET in order to perform some type of turn on. So it acts very much like that relay uh, for that voltage controlled current source. That's essentially the same thing. It's just a MOSFET now or as a different symbol. Um, keep in mind that there's a body diode on uh, invisible body diode between the source and the drain. Um, but that doesn't really come into effect for what we're doing right now. So 5 volts, this should be sufficient. Um, most thresholds are 2 volts if they're standard MOSFETs, uh, but if they are logic level FETs, they may be lower. Depends on which one you, which one you buy. Okay, so there we go. It's nearly 120, and you can see that there's some, some weird nonlinear effects. Um, nearly. Uh, now if we increase this voltage, we should get closer to that. So if I put this up to 10, we should get closer to the actual value. Yeah, you can see it's 118, something like that. Now, I can increase this voltage all the way up to the gate source threshold, which is around 20 volts. We put this up to 18. Let's see what happens. Yeah, we're getting closer and closer to the maximum current. Okay, great. Okay, so that's fine, right? This is one way that we can do that. But let's take a look at it in terms of a signal now. So. Up until now, we've been using sign sources, but we're going to start to use pulse sources, and they have a little bit more um, criteria associated with them that you kind of have to unpack if you're gonna if you're gonna do these kinds of things. So pulse source, you have DC. Uh, we're not doing DC analysis right now, so it doesn't really matter. AC, that's AC analysis. We, that doesn't really matter. Uh, we don't really care about all the AC stuff right now, um, and we're not going to care about offsets. So this is the this is the zero to five value. So I'm going to set this zero to five, or I'm going to set this zero to twelve something like that. Usually, uh, well, it depends. It depends. You, you may have multiple stages that are turning MOSFETs on and off, and that those stages may turn other MOSFETs on or off that are higher level voltage. So I'm going to set this to 8. And there's a delay associated with this. This delay will be helpful because it helps us look to see when the pulse is going to occur. So it's 100 nano in, and the rise characteristic is going to be 10, um, 10 nano. And I'm going to change this to 50 because it's going to be useful to see what the rise and decay characteristics are going to be. The, the, the decay are not exponential. They're going to be linear. And so it's nice to see what that signal might look like. PW stands for the pulse width um, out of the period. So the period is 1 micro, and the pulse width is 400 nano into that. That means that 600 nano, the remaining difference between these, are not going to be sh shown. Or at least it's going to be 0 for that, for that uh, indication. So, okay. so now we just need to wire it up. We have a ground, great, okay. So we should expect that pulse to occur here, and then we should expect the current to be modulated according to that, because that's what's allowing us to turn on this, uh, this the power through this resistor, to you know, turn on the power, but it's really just allowing the current through it and the power dissipates off it. Um, that's one way to say it. But um, And then this is a reference I put there for later. We'll talk about that. So transient, so we run, okay, great. So now we have zero right here, uh, and I didn't show I didn't show the voltage um, here. I didn't show the voltage of the pulse. We're going to put gate there. Great. And we're going to do it on a different graph because I think that'll be easier to view. OK, so that should make sense, right? This is the, the rising characteristic that I showed initially. Again, it is linear here. Uh, for any type of source that you use, it's going to be somewhat, you know, 
um, it's going to follow a different different trajectory up to that point, but it serves the point right here, is that uh, you have a rise characteristic, and then you have the voltage, and then the response of the MOSFET is to allow the current through the device. And if you notice, there is a delay between these two things. I'm going to pull out one of the points. Right, these simulations now start to get a little bit more. Now we start to have to use metrics in order to find the differences. But if you see, the rising voltage starts to go up to, if I'm looking at this category right here, it's starting to approach 2 volts. Okay, as soon as it approaches 2 volts, that's the gate source threshold. So now that's when you start to see that MOSFET open up. Or, or close, depending if you're, if you're thinking about it in terms of a relay. But it, it is providing a pathway, and that's all you need to know. But at 2 volts, that's the threshold um, that, it, that it begins to uh, create a connection between those two points and then allow the current to flow through that resistor. And another way that you can see that is I added a reference voltage. It has nothing to do with the circuit the, as far as its direct involvement with it. But it can be helpful. That's actually called TH. There we go. Okay, TH. There we go. Two volts. And I'm going to put this on the previous plot. I think that was the error right there. Okay. So now it might be a little bit easier to see it when you're doing this kind of analysis that, like, oh, okay, at the intersection of these two things, that's when I can expect to, to start. Uh, my switching. And so that's really all there is to it. If you want to switch MOSFETs like that in the low side, you need a voltage that's higher at the gate and lower at the source. And this could work anywhere in a circuit. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be connected to ground, but it's you'll usually see these kinds of applications. And like if I put, I, I don't have the component here, but if I had it, um, I could put something like this. Imagine this was an LED, okay? Use your imagination here, an LED. And you know, let's say I increase this. Okay, well, now you can see that, all right, based on this, based on the current that's going through this, I'm going to illuminate this LED. So you'll see these circuits quite a bit, which are some type of indication circuit. Will some event happen, maybe an over temperature event of some kind, and then it turns on this LED and lets you know, hey, like I'm over temperature, you should probably not do that or maybe this is another indicator like a fault or an overcurrent, something like that. So these are very, very common actuation circuits, um, but this is a, one type of it or one application of it, which is indication. Um, if you had a motor, um, if you had a solenoid of some kind, um, that's another way that you can do that. So hopefully that gives a basic of, of what, uh, how to do low site switching. As we go along, we'll do more advanced, uh, we'll do more advanced applications of that. Thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.